Hey guys, so it is Thursday and I have not done any vlogging all week long, but I thought that I would hop on here today and take you guys around and show you a quick update on some of the spring projects that we've had going on here at the cottage. Um, I think in several videos back, I showed you guys a little update on our pond project and I took you over to the garden and showed you what was going on there. Um, and then actually, we don't really have anything going on with our study, which is our garage that flooded in January. We are turning that into a study slash homeschool room, but we haven't really done anything with it because we've been working on this pond project. Um, yeah, so I just thought that I would show you guys and give you a little update on that since um, we just had the summer solstice. So we're at midsummer at this point and it's like, here's what's going on at the cottage. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you guys just a quick update really quickly. Okay, so right here I am standing in my driveway looking at the side yard over here by the shop. And this is our front yard right in front of our house right there. Now it looks like a hot mess right now. Um, we have had French drains put in. If you've watched any of my past vlogs, we've had French drains put in all through here. And you can see the black hoses where they're dumping out into this little stream. And then we've had French drains put in all over the front yard, like four or five of them coming down here and there are hoses coming out on this side. Dean just weed eated, but these are a bunch of iris, like uh, leaves right there. He weed eated these sides. Eventually, this dirt will be kind of leveled out and smoothed out on this side better. And then all of this dirt, this big hill of dirt here, and all of this stuff will be smoothed out towards the front. And if you can see back by the pond, there's um, like a ton of dirt back through here that's on the back side of the pond. It'll be smoothed out back on the back of the pond. And um, then everything here on and here in the front on these two sides will be kind of be smoothed over here. Um, and this little stream will be cleaned up. Like the edges will all be nice and cleaned up. And we're probably gonna put some rock around the edges and then all of these bulbs that are here will pop back up next year and um, I'll probably plant some plants along the edges here and we'll get all of these drain pipes kind of cleaned up as they come out of the sides. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what Charlie's barking at. Something. Anyway, just ignore him for a second. <laughs> um, I'm going to walk you guys out here to the pond and show you what this is looking like at the moment because if you guys have an overgrown pond or like if you're like us and you bought a house that the pond is you know 20 years old and never been touched you may be wondering what you need to do to clean it out well this is what we did I don't know I'm sure there are different ways to do it but let me show you what the pond is looking like now now if you are curious about this and you go back and watch any of my past videos about spring projects outdoor projects you can hear all of the frogs right now <laughs> and the toads. You'll know that this pond was covered in this weed called parrot feather. Well, not even a weed, I shouldn't say that. It's an aquatic plant, like you actually plant it on purpose. But you have to keep up with aquatic plants or they will take over. And this one had, had this pond had not been maintained and it took over. So this looks like grass, like everything covering it was this bright green, it looked like grass. Um, so we dug a really deep trench all along this side that flowed into this stream and the guy on the heavy equipment had crane mats that we bought and he came out and he dug the dirt and pulled it out here to get all of that parrot feather out and then he dug this side really deep to get you know everything cleaned out and then he came and he broke the dam so all the water went over here and then he was able to get over there and clean up a little bit more anyway it took it's taken weeks and weeks and weeks i mean i seriously feel like we've been on this project for like two months but he's finally been able to get all the way around and he was actually able it dried up enough to where he was able to get out into the middle and clear that out so obviously now you can see the pond is filling back up with water because we've cleared out the bottom and all the muck so much now i do think think there's just a little bit more he's got to dig this little section right through here a little bit deeper I could be wrong on that that may be fine um, but I do know he's gonna come back and kind of like slope those sides back over there and like all around the back there 
that side over there too. So like you can see there's some dirt right there that hasn't been dug out deep enough. And maybe it doesn't need to be. Maybe as the pond fills up, we've got to put some sort of little mechanism right here to stop the water flow. But as the pond fills up to a certain point, all of that will be covered and it'll raise the water level up. You can see, I actually don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in. We actually found that we had a spring feeding this pond. We never knew it was there because it was clogged. Sorry for this crappy zooming in. Do you see it right there? So there was a pipe there. It's pouring water and it has not stopped pouring water. It's just coming out everywhere. Um, and the water's really clean and it tastes really good. So said somebody, <laughs> none of us. <laughs> um, anyway, it just, it was clogged with like this roots thing was like all stuck in there, but we pulled it out and now the water is free flowing. So we actually have to put some sort of um, like a filter or something so that roots don't grow back in that pipe and it will continue to feed the pond with water and fill it up. Anyway, so the last steps of this project is to continue smoothing back all of these edges backward and really get this area smoothed out. You can see all of this dirt has to go. We have to actually push it further back towards the house and slope the yard down a little bit and then whatever's extra we're going to pile in a dump truck and take it off somewhere and then we will be bringing in topsoil dirt and we will be putting the topsoil dirt on top of this dirt and then we'll be sowing grass seed and putting straw on there and then our grass will be back and we'll have our front yard back and hopefully all of the edges like all around the pond where we spread this dirt out will be full of grass again um, hopefully like the trees that are left around here just kind of come back and look really nice and I will be adding in more plants all around the pond there are a lot of bulbs that were growing and had multiplied so much around this area that I don't even know where the bulbs are gonna start popping up because they're literally like spread out all over the place I don't know if they were destroyed or they're just like we may have bulbs popping up out here in the yard because they got pushed out here I really don't know but anyway, this is where we are. We are at the end. The end is in sight for this big pond project. Now we actually have four ponds on this property. Another one is back there by those trees. It actually feeds down into this pond. It overflows into the pond and it's full of that same parrot feather stuff. So I'm not sure if Dean's gonna have him go and dig that one out also while he's here with the equipment or what. Not sure, but anyway, this was the big one because this is the one that you see from the front yard and it's like the main main pond feature all the others are just smaller um we actually have a pond back here by our garden that's full of cattails that has to be cleaned out at some point because they will take over and dry the pond up if you don't get them under control anyway i'm so glad that we're at the end of this project because it's been going on forever and we really wanted to get our study done this year but we haven't had time to work on it because dean has been so busy with getting all of this done and let me flip around here too i think i showed you guys this we dug out some dead tree stumps back here so that area is going to have to have some grass seed and stuff as well um dean's continued to kind of clean up around our little garden shed but that's like an ongoing project honestly and i feel like a lot of our garden stuff is going to be fixed this fall I don't know if you can see because of the light, but he weeded it over here and we've got a bunch of wood piled up and a place for wood chips and I've got a bunch of extra stuff uh, over there. A lot of planters and things. Anyway, I'm going to flip the camera around and show you our garden because it's doing awesome. It looks so good. Everything is so big and um, we've been trying to keep the weeds out of it, which is like always a fight. Um, Dean and I are both completely on board with doing like I think they're called no dig gardens or like lasagna gardens or layered garden of some sort next year i know i've talked about this before that will be with raised beds over here by the house anyway um so we won't have to worry about weeds as much next year but i'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what the garden is looking like this year okay so as you can see i put wood chips in the aisles so all through here in the aisles and that has done a decent job of keeping the weeds out we covered this front bed and the back bed over there with the black plastic because a lot of like our watermelons and cucumbers and zucchini and squash like their beds to be hot. They like the soil hotter and the black plastic helps to hold heat in. Um, and as you can see, they're doing really well. And on the other side, we have cucumbers and watermelon back there. 
These are potatoes. We decided to do a row of potatoes. That's doing awesome. Um, these are the two rows that we have not been maintaining. That's why there's grass in the two of them. This one has bush beans on one side and peas on the other and some of them are growing and some are not. So we just kind of have not been doing anything with those. I actually think it's too late for the peas anyway. I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of peas out of that. Anyway, there is a bucket. I was weeding earlier today and that's what that bucket is there for. Um, I do need to go on this side and get all of that stuff out on the edge of the potatoes because I went down the other side, I think halfway earlier today and I need to continue doing that. Anyway, we have onions at the end of each row. We cut the tops off so that it'll put more energy into the bulb and make it bigger. We did that on both sides. So you can see there's like some onions down there on the ends of each of the rows and they're doing really well. Then here we have peppers. So we have a bunch of different kinds. We've got sweet peppers and we've got some hot peppers, banana peppers, jalapenos, um, and then, you know, your sweet bell peppers of different colors. And then over here we have tomatoes and we have a ton of different kinds of tomatoes. Um, and these are all doing really well. We actually need to get some tobacco sticks, I think is what they're called, and put in each of the cages because the tomatoes are getting so big that it may just kind of bend and knock the tomato cages over. This one's leaning. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that tomato cage is just leaning because that bush is so big. Um, these are all getting really big. And I haven't fertilized them at all. This one's leaning big time. But you can see we're getting some little tiny tomatoes down there. See those? And these right here are like a purple tomato or black tomatoes. I can't remember what they're called, but they're supposed to be really sweet. I can't wait to get those. We have an early variety somewhere. I'm not sure where that's at. Um, now, the only thing that I've seen that's kind of like I'm not really sure about, kind of a bummer to me, is some of these potato plants you can see are kind of getting some yellow on the bottom, like spots. I haven't seen any bugs on these plants, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I need to look that up and see what the deal is. I did take some of my insecticidal soap spray that I shared on a past YouTube video, and I sprayed everything down because I didn't want, I didn't know if something was eating them and so I just sprayed everything um, and they've done fine since then but some of the bottoms are still kind of yellow and like this one you can kind of see there's some tomatoes on it right there but the bottom leaves are kind of crinkling up and some of them are turning yellow I don't know just the bottoms though the rest looks really great um, yeah you can really see our onion right there the onions just sit kind of on top of the ground and really it's just the roots that are down in the ground. This one's covered up a bit much and I need to really clean up around the edge here because we've got a lot of grass growing right there. This is Swiss chard and <laughs> we didn't have anything to put it in and so Dean stuck it in this with some, um, I don't know, it's got a bunch of weeds growing in it right now. See all of this? Those are weeds and look here's something like a flower. I don't know what that is. Pull that out. I need to weed that. But we have two of those. One's down there. Um, just because we had this extra Swiss chard seed and I was like, just stick it in a bucket. We're just gonna see how it goes. And I think it's too thick. I don't think they're gonna get big enough like they should. Anyway, every morning when I come out here and do my little morning walk, there is Peter Rabbit eating on my Swiss chard. And you know what? If I don't get any Swiss chard for myself, that's okay. Then I just planted this just for him. And he's a happy little guy out here chewing on the Swiss chard. So just for you, Peter, just for you. Anyway, these are watermelon, and these are cucumber right here, these two. And then we've got some squash, and you can already see there are some yellow squash. It looks like we're going to have a bunch, and I need to stay on top of them and pick them while they're small because I do not like squash when it's too big and seedy. Anyway, here is our garden. I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to start getting some fresh food out of this garden. Um... Uh, I was thinking, Dean, or Dean was thinking, that it depends on how this garden does in this spot this year. Last year it did fine. This year it's doing fine. Dean thinks that maybe it's not getting enough sun, but I mean, look at this thing. It's, it looks like it's growing fine and it's getting enough sun. He was thinking of moving it and making it long across here because this little strip in front of that shed gets a ton of sun. Um, so we may move it next year. And if we don't move it next year, then it'll be right here. And we'll probably still do some sort of road market style garden. But a lot of these plants will not be here any longer. They'll be down over here by the house in these raised beds that we're gonna put in on this side. Okay, so 
I just wanted to take you guys around tonight and show you that quick update on our little spring projects. Um, like I said, as we're wrapping up the pond project, and of course the garden's gonna be all summer long, but as we wrap up the pond project, Dean will then kind of transition over into working on the study. And um, fingers crossed that goes well and we get that completed by fall or before cold weather really sets in. Um, I don't have anything that I'm supposed to be doing right now with that. Most of that is him. Uh, we got all of our water pipes switched out because like I did a vlog back in January of the water just pouring out of that space where it had where these little copper pipes had burst. Um, and so we got all of that switched over to PEX, I think is what it's called. It's like plastic or something and it doesn't break. Um, and so he's got to get like lights. He's got to get um, any sheetrock stuff that we're going to update in there done. He has to fill some sort of pipe with concrete, like cut it off and fill it with um, concrete to seal it up. It was the pipe that, oh, what was that thing called? It's kind of like a mud sink, but it was just like, is that what they're called? Mud sinks? Mud something? I don't know. Mud rooms that have sinks? I don't know what they're called. Anyway, it was just some sort of big sink that was in that room and I did not want it to stay there. So we moved it over to our big shop and I don't know if we'll set it up over there at some point. But anyway, there's a pipe in the floor that has to be sealed off. So he's got to do that. So he has a few things that he has to do. Um, we also have to put the flooring in. We have a bunch of extra hardwood from our house that um, we have saved over in our big shop that will go down. Um, we have to redo the stairs to make them look more like interior stairs and not like a garage stairs. Um, let me think about what else. I think that's it. I think those are his big things. Oh, we already took the garage door off. I think I showed that in a vlog um, a while back probably around March sometime, March or April, and we have to get French doors put in and the, you have to kind of build up around them. So those are all things he has to do before I ever need to come in and do any decision making or anything on decor other than lights. I do have to pick what lights I want in there. But yeah, so that project should be coming along soon and I'm really excited to get that done because y'all, oh, I am so ready to be done with all of our books and all of our homeschool stuff in the family room. It just looks... I hate the bins in the room. It just looks cluttered. I don't know. I just don't think it's very aesthetically pleasing. And I kind of like things to look nice because then it makes me feel less kind of chaotic. I don't know if you guys can relate. Maybe you can. Um, anyway, I'm excited to get this study done, get all of our homeschool stuff out there, and then just really clear out space in our family room and have more room for things that would go in a family room. <laughs> okay, anyway, so... Um, Tomorrow I am planning on heading out of town. I have to do one last shopping trip to get some stuff for our C students building, which is our youth group building at our church. Um, a girl, a friend of mine from church and myself, we've been shopping and decorating and just really trying to get that space set up. It looks so good. It looks so different from what it originally was, which is a big empty metal building. Um, well, I actually had some walls and some wood and things like that in there but it looks very good now that we've gotten some decor in there so I'm going shopping tomorrow and I'll probably talk to you and take you along with me here and there um, to grab the rest of the things that I need fingers crossed I get everything else that I need so that maybe on Saturday maybe sometime next week I go and put it all in and set it all up and we really kind of get that finished and then the only things we have to do is like we got to get an air hockey table I think the kids want like a pinball machine. Dean's going to build a carpet ball table. That's a pretty fun game. Um, let me think. And then we've got to get like, like a fire pit and stuff set up outside. We've got a big volleyball net kind of thing we're going to put up out there. Anyway, we just have outdoor stuff to do. So we're closing in on all of these projects that have been hanging over our head all spring and the beginning of summer. And I'm so done. I'm like ready to get it done. I want to get all of this stuff off my plate before August and our vacation comes up because we are going to the Savannah Tybee Island area in Georgia and I am really excited about going to the beach. It's been three years since we've been to the beach. The boys are looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. <sighs> anyway, I just wanna have all these projects kinda done and not thinking about them anymore and I just wanna go sit my butt in the sand and relax. Not really in the sand with my butt, but you know just go relax at the beach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey guys. So I am off to Johnson city today, um, to do some shopping. Like I told you guys yesterday for our youth 
groups building kind of thing that we're making like a really special teen hangout spot. I've got a few things left on my list. I also want to see if I can find a dress for a wedding that Dean and I are going to next weekend. And um, I need to pick up my sister-in-law a baby shower gift. Um, let me think what else I need to do. I need to stop by Aldi's and grab a few things from there. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of things on my list to do today. And I don't know if I'll get it all done, but that's just kind of how it is. Whatever I don't get done, I will just um, do some other day. All right, um, the boys are actually at home with Dean. He is switching like shifts with his brother. He usually works first shift and his brother works second shift, so they're switching today. Um, and so he's home with the boys and they are working on cleaning out the garage. This is like the third time we've cleaned it out because we just keep putting stuff back in there because we aren't getting on to that project yet. Anyway, so that's what they're doing today. He's also doing a little bit of homeschooling with the boys, which they are never excited about when Dean does homeschooling with them because he does it differently than I do. And that's just the kind of thing that they're not really used to. So I think, I'm, I'm sure with public school kids too, sorry, I'm trying to shield the sun from the camera. So if you see my hand, that's what I'm doing. For some reason, it's like coming in right there really brightly, see? Um, I'm sure public school kids do this too. They probably whine and complain about school, don't love it. There's certain things they do like, certain things they don't like. Well, homeschool kids do the same thing. My kids tell me all the time, oh, I don't like doing this, or oh, I don't wanna sit here and do thus and such, or I don't wanna do my book work today. They're always asking, can we take a week off from school this week? Because <laughs> we just take weeks off whenever we need to. Um, I guess that's kind of what we've been doing this year anyway. They just, I mean, school is work and they don't love it all the time. So even if I'm teaching them, they complain about it. But there are days like today where Dean switches shifts with his brother and I go out of town and the boys still have schoolwork that they have to do. They have a list of things that they're supposed to do every day. And they don't have to do it. If they don't do it, we'll get to it at a later time. But it's helpful to me if Dean kind of keeps them on track and does school with them. Not only that, but I think it's helpful for him to do school with the boys as well to see what they're doing and to see how school works at home with them, like what it's like to teach all four of them. So I think that's good for him to do. Let me move this camera a little bit. And it's also good, it's good for me to have a break and him to teach. It's good for the boys to have him teach them sometimes, me teach them sometimes. Anyway, all that to say, they are helping him out in the garage today. So that's a little bit of school stuff that they'll be doing, cutting, um, the boards and helping learn how to build these little wall frames. Um, and they're also keeping up with their schoolwork that they can do on their own. They'll need him a little bit for like their spelling dictation and things like that. Um, but, you know, dad does school differently with them and they just have to learn to deal with a different teacher, a different style of doing things. I told them they were complaining about it the other day because they were like, Dad doesn't let us lay down when he reads a story to us or he doesn't let us draw or play Legos while we're doing, um, when they do their group work together, which I do let them as long as they can answer my questions and they're paying attention, I let them draw or, you know, build stuff with Legos or whatever. Again, as long as they're paying attention. Um, but Dean doesn't do that with them. So they don't like that. And they were complaining the other day and I was saying, boys, if you were in public school, or if you decide to go to college one day, um, you, or even like if you apprenticed under different people, you have to learn to listen to different teachers and they're all gonna have different styles of teaching you. This is just something you have to do. Now, we used to do homeschool co-ops and they had different teachers there and they did fine in those classes, but we don't really do homeschool co-ops. We haven't done them in the last three years or so. I just don't find that it's as valuable to me and our family as it is, I guess, to other people. Um, I feel like the classes that we end up signing up for and taking are like fun and they are beneficial, but they don't take a load off of me. They don't help me at all. I still have to get all of the other classes in throughout the week and then I'm gone all day long one day to this co-op for the kids to take just fun classes. It's just, I guess the benefits don't 
outweigh, or the pros don't outweigh the cons, there are benefits either way. Anyway, I just, I just don't love it. And the boys, sometimes they act like they miss it. And so I've thought about maybe doing it again with them. And maybe as they get older, like in high school, maybe that would be helpful because maybe then it would take a class off of me. Like if they took a biology class in co-op instead of me teaching it at home, I don't know. That's one thing, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. Another thing with co-ops that I've thought about before um, is they sometimes, depending on who's teaching the class, they have a different teaching style. And so what if they're pick, picking up and going through this old, boring textbook and that's not how I teach my kids at home. So I don't think the boys would get a lot out of it because they're not used to having to read a dry boring textbook and then take tests based on what they've read from that's not really how we homeschool so even if we went to a co-op class and they were taking a class there that I wasn't going to teach at home I don't really know how well they would do in it but at the same time they do have to learn how to do that because when they get in college they're going to have you know textbooks that are not the most fun it's not like the living books that we use in school now anyway I guess the goal is to teach them how to learn and give them little glimpses at different types of, oh, that sun again. I love the sun, but you know, sometimes, <laughs> um, give them little glimpses into different ways of learning. So sometimes they're going to have to have this really boring dry textbook and they're going to have to figure out how to glean information from that. Other times they're going to learn from someone showing them something. Um, other times they're going to learn just by doing it on their own and figuring it out. And then other times they're going to be able to read a more enjoyable book and learn some things from that. So anyway, lots of different, lots of different ways to learn, lots of different teaching styles, lots of learning styles. Anyway, the point is Dean is teaching them some stuff today, doing school with them. And, um, I hope they get through their stuff by the time I get home and if they don't it's not really that big of a deal we'll either catch up on what they didn't get done later or we'll just move on it'll be fine life is good fine so that's it for today I will um, maybe film a little bit here and there in the store it just depends on how busy it is and if I remember um, yeah and if I get like a baby shower gift for my sister-in-law or I find a dress for this wedding next weekend I'll try to show you guys that as well I just hit the jackpot. Look at all these crusty old terracotta pots. I'm gonna bring them home. I love them. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Dean's up the rickety stairs trying to find things for me. just been given permission to harvest small bits of the plants we see here in the garden area to take home with us which is super generous so I'm walking around with my plant ID app and trying to see what I want to take home to my garden So I just want to quickly jump on here to wrap up this week's vlog. But before I do that, I wanted to share something that I got with you guys in the mail. Um, back in my natural laundry care video, I told you all that I was doing the Mighty Fix, which is like MightyNest.com. They have this monthly subscription service and it helps send you some things to make your home a little bit greener. And this month, um, I upgraded my box and spent a little bit more money, but I got these beeswax wraps in 
my box this month and I'm really excited to try them. These have been out for a really long time. Um, if you're into like natural living and things, you've probably seen these or maybe even you've tried them yourself and you're familiar with it. But I've never used them before, so I bought this pack and it comes with two small, two medium, two large, and one bread wrap. And they last about a year and you can just rinse them off and let them air dry and reuse them. So I'm excited to try that. Um, like I said, this came in this month's box and I did upgrade the box. Last month I got some little like cleaning tablet things for these um, bottles that I use for Water Keeper and I did an Instagram reel showing how that's made or how to do those um, little fizzy tablets to clean the inside of the bottles where you can't really reach in there with a bottle brush. Um, and then the first month was the little laundry wool balls for your dryer and I showed those in my natural laundry care video that I talked about and I'll link to that above. Um, anyway, so I'm excited to try these this week and see how they help me to get rid of, hopefully, um, using plastic baggies to put food in. That's like my big thing. I've, I've kind of greened up my kitchen as far as switching from like plastic storage containers to glass storage containers. I use mason jars for a lot of different things or, or just any glass canning jar, not necessarily the mason brand. Um, yeah, but plastic baggies are so handy and I still use those things. So anyway, I'm hoping that this helps me to kind of wrap food up in these. Um, yeah, and I don't know if you guys wanna pause the video, you can see the sizes right here on these um, different wraps, like the actual dimensions. Anyway, these are made in the US. It says they have beeswax, organic cloth, tree resin, and organic jojoba oil. So anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this week's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, it would make my day and I would appreciate it very much if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribing to my channel yet, I would love it if you subscribed um, and click the bell to turn on notifications so you know when new vlogs are available. Again, I share like herbal, natural lifestyle, and just family content here on my Growing Up Herbal YouTube channel. Anyway, I will talk to you guys in next week's vlog. Take care. Bye.